Good afternoon. Good evening, everyone. And thank you, Monica, for the introduction. And it's good to see you again. It is an honor to join you at your 22nd AFA conference. Obviously, I regret that I cannot be with you in person. And I'm sure that we are all looking forward to the day when the circumstances allow us to travel freely and safely again. And I hope that will be very soon. Uh, today, I will speak from a global perspective about the future of accountants in your region. There are many reasons to be optimistic, especially because of the talent and the enterprising spirit of the youth of Southeast Asia. And there are many things that our profession can do to prepare a brighter future. With our profession's long-standing commitment to ethical integrity, professional skepticism and the public interest, I am confident that we will succeed. But we must always remember that the onus is, us, is, is on us as professionals to do the right thing. We must fiercely guard our independence. We must advocate for good governance. And we must even more strongly advocate for public sector transparency, particularly in financial management. We are fortunate to belong to a global profession with unparalleled resources, such as the International Code of Ethics for Professional Accountants, including independent standards. All of these qualities are what make us one of the most trusted institutions in society. And without them, we will lose our right to be heard and we will lose public trust, something that we all know takes years to earn, but can be lost in seconds. So with that said, our conversation about the future needs to focus on building more inclusive societies, whilst at the same time managing the world's greatest challenge, which today is not just the COVID pandemic, but the challenge of climate change. Earlier this month, 25,000 delegates from nearly 200 countries at COP26 met in Glasgow in Scotland for what was probably the most important event ever held on the future of human life on our planet. And the UN Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, put 20, COP26 in context in a speech to heads of states. He said that the 2020s is the critical decade. And I believe he's right, because the science is clear. It's very clear that global warming beyond 1.5 degrees Celsius will mean irreversible environmental catastrophes, and that the predicted greenhouse gas emissions through 2030 will really severely limit our options for future climate change. So the critical decade has begun, in fact, we only have eight years left. And the effects of climate change for ASEAN countries is already stark. Rising sea levels are inundating coastal areas, such as the Mekong River Delta, where fishing and agriculture employ millions and feed million and millions and millions more. The great cities of Southeast Asia, cultural beacons such as Jakarta, Bangkok and Ho Chi Minh City, are steadily sinking as we speak. Extreme weather is becoming more frequent and intense. Typhoon Haiyan, which claimed nearly 10,000 lives and inflicted $3 billion in damage, is not just a painful memory, sadly. It is a sign of what is to come, even if limiting the temperature rise to 1.5 degrees is achieved. And if we fail, today's extremes will unfortunately become tomorrow's norms. So only by drastic and immediate collective action on a 2030 timeline with ambitious targets for mitigation, adaptation, ambitious climate financing and international technical co collaboration cooperation can we stave off the worst predicted outcomes for humankind. And if this task feels too large, too rushed to some, too complicated to others, I ask you to imagine the 23rd AFA conference two years from now. Will the COP26 targets be within reach? It is really today beyond anyone's ability to predict because there's too much uncertainty, too many externalities, 
too much geopolitical gamemanships to be confident in any prediction. But all we can say today is that we must absolutely try right now and for the years to come to mitigate climate change and adapt to its unavoidable consequences. And only with climate justice that reflects historical disparities in economic development can our future be truly equitable and inclusive. I was impressed by ASEAN's joint statement ahead of COP26. The statement is insightful, both for its long view of the situation and for its near-term calls to action. Section 14 of the statement calls for wealthy countries to fulfill their climate financing pledges. Section 18 addresses the pandemic of pollution, which claims 5 million lives every year by calling, and I quote, enhancing climate change mitigation ambition by integrating mitigation and air quality planning into their action plans. And section 19 proposes, and again, I quote, in the context of the COVID-19 crisis, to align economic recovery plans and stimulus packages with the goals of the Paris Agreement and the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. So this brings me to certain actions required of our profession and our partners in the industry, in the public sector and in society at large. We are still in the critical window of time in which we can shape the post-COVID recovery. This is an important opportunity, unlike any in recent memory. It is also an enormous task, full of challenges for public financial management, for businesses, for the global economy, and for ordinary people. And I'm speaking only of the challenges we see coming because there will be many more we do not yet see today. The bottom line is that the world's governments must advance from crisis response to recovery with sustainable fiscal programs and other measures that bring about a digital green and equitable future. And the profession must innovate, advise and lead wherever and whenever we can. IFAC has developed four points to guide our sustainability agenda, which I believe can help inform the strategies of our members and our stakeholders. One, our profession needs to encourage and support sustainability related skills and competencies. And IFAC will continue to work with the professional accountancy organizations and through the International Panel on Accountancy Education to demonstrate that professional accountants not only have the skills and competencies needed to prepare, to assure and use this information, but also the expertise to build and evaluate necessary controls and processes related to sustainability. IFAC supports the positioning that professional accountants are best placed to meet the sustainability related needs of organizations. Two, Organizations and individual accountants need to champion an integrated mindset. Financial information and sustainability related information are most useful for decision making when an integrated approach connects the two. Quite simply, financial and sustainability information are not and must not be siloed. An integrated approach leads to better decisions that deliver long term value. Better returns to investors, broader value for customers, for employees and suppliers, and no less important, greater capacity for climate action and other aspects of sustainable development. Third, advancing reporting and assurance on sustainability reporting will be crucial. Over the past year, IFAC has advocated strongly to our stakeholders that to get relevant, reliable, and comparable, and indeed assurable sustainability information, we need globally consistent sustainability standards. Assurance is also a necessary component of the evolving global reporting system and an imperative for our profession. One of the core competences of our profession is working with experts in a variety of areas, and that will certainly continue. IFAC will be reaching out to member bodies and firms to better understand current and best market practices, 
to identify gaps and develop a shared narrative that best positions professional accountants to perform sustainability assurance. And fourthly, we need to position the profession to lead because it is imperative for national and regional voices of the profession, such as ASEAN, AFA, because professional accountants are central to gathering, analyzing, and communicating high quality information. Our role in sustainability related reporting in insights represents an even greater opportunity to unlock value for companies and clients. We will have to integrate into our work new and diverse subject matter and tech, subject matter expertise and technologies. But our core knowledge, skills, professional judgment, integrity, and code of ethics are already in place. The future potential of sustainability information is too important to not get it right. And together, we will actively make the case that our profession is well positioned to rise to this challenge. Professional accountants in all stages of their careers, as well as students and aspiring accountants, need their professional accountants organizations to direct the a curriculum for education and training that reflects the new and emerging de demands of sustainable development. Reporting and assuring non-financial information is becoming an exceptionally important area for the profession to add new kinds of value. Finally, I want to emphasize the positive. This is the critical decade for climate action, but it is also the decade of ASEAN. In the 10 years since 2011, ASEAN's total GDP rose from $2.3 trillion to $3.3 trillion, and it is projected to rise by another $1 trillion by the end of this decade. ASEAN will before, before long become one of the world's largest, largest hubs of economic activity. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity for our profession in ASEAN to advance our profession and the public interest in a race against time. I truly believe that our profession is a force for good in the world. We are a critical component of good governance. We drive and support decisions that are made for the benefit and prosperity of all. And by doing so, we will bring about a more inclusive and fairer society societies everywhere that we all want to be part of and that our children and our grandchildren in the future will be proud of our contribution to making this world fairer, safer and more equitable. With that, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Dr. Wan Tin for his leadership of AFA and to wish Voravit Janathan Nakul much success during his presidential term of office. I'd like to thank you all for everything you are doing as professional accountants in the ASEAN region. And I hope that you have had a very successful conference.